sanctifice ter nomem tuam, adveniat reniam tuam, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celi et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et miti nobis debitanos. in this house. Nobody cares a button for my feelings. It's been a most unedifying visit. Nobody listens to a word, I say. There's no respect. Everyone shouts at once. It's like some frightful parliament of apes. Come on, Flipper. Let's go. I can't stay here. If Madame would care for a nice... You, my girl, are nothing but a maid with far too much to say most of that impertinent. We don't need your opinion. But, Grandmother, there is... There's a word for you, my boy. Buffoon. Yes, I am your grandmother, and I should know. And if I've told your father once, I've told him a hundred times. I think you're a bad lot who'll never give him anything but heartache. I think... Good oh, Lord! The quiet one's found her voice. Sweetness and light. The sister, meek and mild. But still waters run deep, they always say. And deep down, you're as bad as all the rest. Madame, no, dear. Don't take this amiss. But everything you do is simply wrong. You ought to set these two a good example, as their late mother never failed to do. You spend too much. I must say it upsets me the way you go round dressed like a princess. A woman who wants just to please her husband has no business parading like a clothes horse. No, my sister, madame, and is quite And as too for good. you... Well, it's not that I don't like you, respect you, but if you were my brother, if I were my son's wife, you'd be barbed the house, spouting your endless theories about life, which no one in their right mind will accept. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps I've been too frank. No, no, Grandma. I, I'm like that. I never could conceal what's on my mind. I'm sure your Monsieur Tartuffe would be pleased. He's a good man and must be listened to. And if I have to hear a fool like you attacking him, I may get very cross. Some sanctimonious faker seizes power and I'm supposed to lie back and enjoy it? And no one is allowed the simplest pleasure without permission from this turkey cock. If what he says is anything to go by, you move and you commit a mortal sin. His buzzard's eye is always watching And us. everything he watches must be watched. He's trying to lead you up the path to heaven. And my son ought to force you all to love him. No, listen to me, Grandmother. No father, no one could make me wish him well. There's only one way out of this, I tell you. I am that ready-eared peasant can't but come to blows. But you can't deny. It's scandalous to see a stranger taken over here. A beggar who, when he came, had nothing on his feet and whose old wardrobe won't worth sixpence. Going so far as to forget his place, lording it over us and finding fault. <laughs> You all enjoy these fairy tales, I see. In your house, no one gets a word in it. Well, it's because of Madame holding forth all day. Well, now I've got a chance to speak at last. I'm telling you, the wisest thing my son has ever done is to install Tatouf, whom God has sent here just when he was needed to save your souls when you had gone astray. <laughs> 
I don't know what you're sniggering about. If you want to laugh, go to an asylum. I'll say no more. Goodbye, my dear. I take a very dim view of all this. You won't be seeing me for quite some time. Oh, come on, flip pot. Wake up, don't goof at me. Oh, my goodness me, I'll, I'll box your ears for you, you slut. Well, I'm staying put. I don't want her to start on me again. Silly old. <laughs> what a shame she isn't here to comment on your turn of phrase. She got annoyed with us for no good reason. She's clearly besotted with this tattoo. I promise you, her son is even worse. And if you saw him, you'd be appalled. But during the Troubles, he was very brave. Enhanced his reputation with the king. But ever since he's fallen for tattoo. He's gone around like someone in a daze. He loves the man a hundred times as much as his wife, his son, his daughter, or his mother. He pampers him. He caresses him. I'd say you couldn't be more loving to a mistress. Who sits him at the top end of the table, enjoys watching him eat enough for six. You have to serve him all the tastiest bits. And even when he burps, he says, God, in short, he's mad about him. He's his hero. His slightest action is miraculous. And every word he says is like an oracle. The fact is, he's a man can spot a victim. Even his servant orders us about, gives himself airs, and preaches wild-eyed sermons, and throws away our rouge and beauty spots. <laughs> the other day, the brute found my lace bib between two pages of the Lives of the Saints and ripped it up, saying it was a crime to stain what's holy with the devil's frills. <laughs> oh, silly to abstain here. You missed her lecture at the gate. <laughs> My husband's here. He hasn't seen me, and I'd rather wait for him upstairs. I'll wait and catch him here. I've really only time to say hello. Ask him about my sister's wedding, will you? Mm. I have a feeling Tartuffe is against it and forcing him to make these long delays. It's mm. important to me as well, you know. My sister loves Belair and he loves her, but as you know, I'm in love with his it's sister. Ah, <laughs> oh, Cleon, hello. I was just on my way. Oh. I'm glad I caught you. <laughs> Nothing much out yet, is mm. there? Mm -hmm. In the uh, country? Uh, um, you must excuse me just a minute. You don't mind if I find out what's been happening, put my mind at rest. Everything fine, what's everybody up to? Are they well? Mm, two days ago, the mistress had a fever and a strange nagging headache all day long. And Tartuff. Tartuff's in the best of health. Oh. Big, fat and blooming with his nice red mouth. Poor boy. <laughs> she felt quite nauseous all evening mm -hmm. and never touched a mouthful of her dinner. <sighs> a headache was so painful. And Tartuff. He sat in front of her and ate alone, oh. swallowing, most religiously, a brace of partridge followed by a leg of mutton. Oh, poor boy. <laughs> she never closed her eyes all night. Mm -hmm. She had hot flushes which kept her awake. We had to sit up with her till the dawn. And that too? He was struck down by a kind of pleasantly weary feeling <laughs> and repaired directly from the table to his room, <laughs> where he collapsed into his nice warm bed and slumbered dreamlessly until the morning. Poor boy. <laughs> we finally persuaded her to be bled. Ah. And she felt better at once. And Tartuff. Put his bravest face on it. Eh? And bracing himself against the blows of fate mm -hmm. to make up for the blood the mistress lost, drank four large tumblers full of wine for breakfast. Ah. <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> at any rate, they're now quite well. Uh -huh. And I must go upstairs and tell the mistress how interested you've been in her recovery. Oh, right. She's making fun of you. Well, you must have noticed. And I don't want to make you angry, but... Oh. Quite frankly, it's no more than you deserve. I've never heard of such grotesque behaviour. How can this man have cast a spell on you? How can you talk about him? You don't know him. Uh, certainly, I don't know him. But to guess the kind of man he is, you only need to... No, 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 no. 
You would be captivated by him, and your ecstasy would know no bounds. You see, this is a man who... Well, a man, in fact, to sum up, a man. You listen to him and you enjoy the deepest peace of mind. And see the world for what it is, a dunghill. Oh, yes. I've got changed under his instruction. He teaches me to cast aside a fiction and clear my mind of any trace of love. Now I could watch my mother and my brother, my wife and children die and not give that. I see. Mm -hmm. He's a humanitarian. <laughs> uh, if you'd only been there when we met, you'd feel as warm towards him as I do. He'd arrive every day in church and kneel meekly right next to me and never failed to capture the whole congregation's notice with the enthusiasm of his praying. He'd groan and sigh and, and throw himself around and humbly kiss the ground time and again. And when I left, he'd hurry on ahead to hand me the holy water at the door. His servant, who was like his mirror image, told me about him, who he is. His poverty. I gave him money, but he, restrained as ever, always tried to give some of it back to me. Too much, he'd say. I don't need half this much. I don't see why I should deserve your pity. And, well, I'd refuse to take it. He'd go and share it out among the poor. In front of me. Finally, I was inspired to bring him here. Since when, it seems that all of us have flourished. Oh, he disapproves of everything, of course, and keeps a very close watch on my wife, just to preserve my honor. Gives me names of all the people who make eyes at her. <laughs> oh, he's far more jealous than I ever was. You've no idea. The the fervor of the man. He thinks the slightest failing is a sin. He's scandalized by what we hardly noticed. <laughs> Recently, <laughs> he was full of self-reproach for having caught a flea while he was praying and killed it with excessive savagery. Now, what is this? <laughs> Are you making fun of me? Huh? Or is it true you don't make a distinction between hypocrisy and piety? Yeah. And do you really class them both together? Respect the mask as highly as the face? Consider sham the equal of sincerity? Yes, yes. I see you're a most distinguished genius. Uniquely brilliant and uniquely wise compared with whom the rest of us are fools. No, <laughs> I am not a most distinguished genius. No, no, no. But there's one thing I do know how to do, that's tell the difference between true and false. And while there's no one I approve of more than genuinely religious men and nothing nobler or more uplifting in the world than the enthusiasm of true belief, equally there's nothing more disgraceful than specious fervor laid on with a trowel. And no one worse than those downright imposters, mm. those career mystics, businessmen on their knees trying to notch up credit and prestige by screwing up their eyes and throwing fits. <laughs> Is that all? Well, no. Well, perhaps you'll excuse me. Uh, no, uh, just one minute, please. I'll change the subject. You have promised Valère your daughter's hand. That's right. Yes, and you'd even given them a date? Yes. Yes, then why have you postponed the wedding? Who knows? Have you perhaps changed your mind? Possibly. Are you going to break your word? I didn't say that. I just can't imagine what could prevent you honoring your promise. Ah, depends. What's all this evasiveness? Valère has asked me to see you about it. Oh, that is nice. Yes. But what am I to tell him? You yeah, tell him what you like. Yes, but then I have to know what you have in mind. What are your plans? To do God's will. Oh, be serious, will you? Look, Valère has had your promise. Will you keep it? Goodbye. I fear the worst for his engagement. I have to warn him what's going on. What are you doing? 
Nothing. I'm only checking no one's here. I wouldn't like us to be overheard. Well, Marianne, I've always appreciated your obedience, and you've always been very dear to me. Well, I'm very grateful, Father, that you love me. Well said, my dear. And if I am to continue, your only worry need be to provide me with what I want. I take a pride in it. Good. <laughs> what do you think of our guest, Tartuffe? Me? You. Now be careful what you say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say anything you like. Ah, very sensible. Well then, my dear, why don't you say he's wholly excellent. He's reached your heart. And it would make you very happy if I agreed to let him marry you. Hmm? <laughs> what is it? Sorry? What? I don't think I caught what you just said. <laughs> what do you mean? Who is it that you wanted me to say had reached my heart and it would make me happy if I agreed to let you marry whom? <laughs> but look, it wouldn't. Not at all. Why should you want to make me tell a lie? What I want is for it to be the truth. <laughs> That's my decision. What more do you want? You mean... Yes, you my... Dear, I intend to make Tartuffe a member of this family. He's going to be a husband. It's all settled. And since I have the power to insist... What are you doing? Eavesdropping again? Suffering from chronic curiosity? Well, I heard somebody mentioning this marriage. And I couldn't decide if it was rumour with some basis in fact or pure invention. The one obvious thing was it was nonsense. <laughs> you, you find it unbelievable. Oh, so much so, I wouldn't believe it even if you told me. I know. You're telling us a fairy story. I'm telling you exactly what will happen. Rubbish. Now, this is serious, Marianne. Get on with you. Your father doesn't mean it. He's joking. Will you listen? No, no good. We don't believe you. I'm starting to get annoyed. All right, we do believe you then. In which case, shame on you. Well, you look quite normal, that big beard in the middle of your face. And yet you mean you're mad enough. Now, that's that... enough. Now, listen, you've taken certain liberties today which I don't like. One little bit. I warn you. Let's try and keep our temper, shall we, sir? I think this is some <laughs> elaborate joke. Your daughter isn't cut out for a bigot. And he should have other things on his mind. And anyway, what possible advantage could such a marriage bring you? <laughs> and why choose a beggar for your son-in-law with all your money? If he has nothing, all the more reason to admire him. Hmm? His poverty is honest poverty. It lifts him higher than the great. He's poor because of voluntary renunciation and his indifference to temporal things and his commitment to eternity. I'm your father, and I know what's best. It's true, I promised you to Valère, but he's been seen more than once playing cards, and I suspect he may be a free thinker. I haven't seen a lot of him in church. Why should he go exactly when you do? Well, he's not like others, just there to be seen. I don't need your opinion. All I know is heaven smiles on Tartuva, and that is an asset second to none. This marriage will fulfill your wildest dreams. A series of sweet pleasures. You will live together, faithfully in love, like two true children, like two turtle doves. <laughs> you'll never quarrel, and you'll find you'll be able to turn him into anything you please. A cuckold, for example, which is all she'll want to turn him into. But enough. In my wisdom... It's written uh, all over him. It's in his stars. Not all your daughter's virtue could resist Will you it. stop interrupting? Shut up and keep your nose out of other people's business. I'm only trying to help. Well, don't. <laughs> be quiet. It's only because we love you. I don't want to be loved. Even so, I want to love you. <sighs> you see, your reputation is important to me. I hate to see you lay yourself open to general ridicule. Shut up. How could I let you contract such a marriage in all conscience? Will you be quiet, snake or I thought you were supposed to be religious. So I am, but all this... Jabba is making my blood boil, and I insist you hold your tongue. Certainly. Or I say another word.
but you can't stop me thinking. Think as much as you like. Just concentrate on not speaking to me. All right. All right, Don't. To In my wisdom, after mature consideration. You're a you're not gonna learn to speak. I'm not exactly very pretty. Tartuffe is off the side of Notre Dame. Even if you could find no sympathy with all of his gifts. Oh, this is your lucky day. If I was in her place, I'm telling you, no man would marry me against me, Will. Or oh, soon after the wedding, he'd find out there's one way women can revenge themselves. I see, you're just ignoring what I say. Well, what's the matter? I'm not speaking to you. Oh, well, what are you doing, then? Talking to myself. <laughs> I see. I've never heard such insolence. She deserves a good smack. In my wisdom, after mature consideration. My dear, you must agree to my suggestion. The husband I have chosen for you is... Speak up. Well, I have nothing else to say. But surely there's something. No, I don't feel like it. But I'm waiting. Well, you think I'm a fool? You must agree to my suggestion and your complete acceptance of my choice. I will be seen dead with such a husband. <laughs> oh, that girl's a pest! I can't put up with her without surrendering to sinful rage! Go on with our discussion. Her insolence has goaded me to flinch. I need some air to calm me down a bit. Well, uh, have you lost your tongue? How am I supposed to play your part in this? Why you let somebody propose such an idiotic plan without saying a single word against it? Well, what would I say? A father's power is absolute. Anything to stave off a threat like this. What? Tell him you can't love a second hand. Tell him you're marrying for your sake, not his. Since you're the centre of attention here, it's you, not him, your husband must appeal to. And if he thinks Tartuffe is so attractive, he's quite welcome to marry him himself. I've never had the strength to raise a protest against father's authority. I admit it. Uh, just a minute. Valera's has made his move. Tell me, do you love him or do you not? How can you ask me such a question, Doreen? How can you be so unfair to my love? Haven't I always confided in you and told you 50 times how much I love him? How do I know all that was true? Doreen, it's very wrong of you to doubt it. You know I've never hidden my true feelings. So then you love him? Yes. Passionately. By all appearances, he loves you, too. I think he does. And both of you are most impatient to get married. Yes, we are. Then what's your plan to do about this business? Well, if they force me, I'm going to kill myself. That's wonderful. Mm. I hadn't thought of that. Of course, if you die, you'll avoid all these problems. What a brilliant way out! Oh, it makes me angry to have to listen to this sort of talk. Well, there's no need to get in a huff, Doreen. Sure. You have no sympathy for people's suffering. I have no sympathy for empty threats or crumbling without putting up a fight. Well, what do you expect? I can't help being timid. But perseverance should be part of love. And I have persevered. I love Valère. Isn't it up to him to win my hand from Father? What? <laughs> When father is this clown who is utterly besotted with Tartuffe and breaks his firm agreement on the marriage, you think the blame should be put on Valère? Would it be right to show by flat refusal or wild defiance how much I'm in love? However fine he is, do you think I should abandon my sex's modesty, my daughter's duty? Or do you think I should publicise my love? No. No, I wouldn't want that. Now I see. 
You want to marry Tartuffe after all. And now I stop to think I was quite wrong to try to dissuade you. What right had I to quarrel with your wishes? He's a most eligible match, is that Monsieur Tartuffe? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be sneezed at, is there? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't deny Monsieur Tartuffe is a man who knows his backside from his elbow. To be his better half, that is no small honour. He's generally admired. He's of good birth. At least he says he is. Sort of well-built. Those red ears and that nice florid face. Oh, the only danger is you'll be too happy. Oh, God. Can you imagine the elation to be the wife of such a handsome man? Stop it, please. Find some way to help me. I give up now. I'll do whatever you say. No, no. A daughter must obey a father. Even if he wants to marry her to an ape. You're very lucky. Why are you complaining? You'll take the coach back to his little town. You'll meet all his uncles and his cousins. You're certain to enjoy their conversation. You'll be taken to all the best addresses and welcomed there by all the dignitaries. The bailiff's wife, the wife of the JP. They'll get out their spare canvas chair for you. Then there's the village fate to look forward to. And there'll be a ball with a great orchestra consisting of a pair of bagpipers. And as a special treat, an organ grinder. <laughs> then there's those amusing punch and Judy shows. And if your husband... Do you want to kill me? Please, just find some way to help me. You mustn't ask me that. Please, Doreen. No, must go ahead now. You deserve it. Doreen. No. After all I've told you. Nothing doing. Tartuffe's your man. You want to escape him now? You know, I've always told you everything. Now, please help me. No. You're going to be tartuffed. I see. Well, since you're unmoved by my fate, you best abandon me to my despair. And let it be my ready consolation. I know there's one sure way out of my troubles. Try not to be angry. In spite of everything, I can't help feeling sorry for you. If I'm to undergo this cruel martyrdom you see, Dorin, mm -hmm. I feel sure it's going to be the death of me. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure there's some clever way we can... But here's Valère himself. I have just heard the most extraordinary piece of news. What's that? That you are marrying Tartuffe. It's true. My father wants me to. Your father? He's changed his mind. He's just this minute told me. What? Seriously? Yes. Seriously. He seems determined I should marry him. And what do you intend to do now? I don't know. Well, there's an honest answer. You don't know? No. No? What's your advice? Oh, my advice is to accept. That's your advice? It is. You mean it? Well, certainly I mean it. It's a handsome offer, well worth your attention. Well, then I'd better follow your advice. Well, I don't think that will be too hard for you. No harder than it was for you to give it. Well, I did so in the hope of giving you pleasure. Whereas I shall now follow it to please you. Well, let's see how they can get out of this. <laughs> is this what love is? Was it just deceit when you used to say... I'd rather not discuss that, please. You have just said quite openly that I should marry the husband I've been offered. I'm announcing that I intend to do so following your excellent advice. You shouldn't use my stand as an excuse. You'd already decided. And you're grasping at this silly pretext to justify breaking your word. It's true. You put it very well. I'm sure you never really loved me. <sighs> well, you're entitled to your opinion. Yes, I'm entitled. And I may manage to forestall your plan by taking my proposal somewhere else. I wouldn't be surprised. You're so good-looking. 
God. Let's leave my looks out of it, shall we? Well, they can't be that good as you've just yourself demonstrated. But there is somebody who feels kindly for me. And now I'm free, won't be ashamed to remedy my loss. Your loss seems far from great. I'm sure you'll have no difficulty finding consolation. Well, you may be confident I'll do my best. Being abandoned puts us on our mettle. We must make every effort to forget the person who's responsible. And even if we can't quite succeed, we must pretend to. Well, to show oneself in love with someone faithless would be the most unpardonable weakness. What an exalted, lofty sentiment. Well, I don't think anyone could disapprove. I suppose you think I should keep my love for you alive and burning endlessly. Oh. What do you fall into someone else's arms without the right to find some new allegiance for the heart you've rejected? That sounds the best idea. I wish you'd done it already. <laughs> Is that what you wish? It is. Right. I'm not staying here to be insulted. I'll do you a good turn by leaving. Fine. 